How could I have been so blind all these years? The words echoed in my mind as I stared blankly at the floral centerpiece on our table, reeling from the conversation I'd just overheard in the restroom hallway. This was supposed to be a celebration, a special birthday dinner for Eli at his favorite bistro. He was finally turning eighteen, my only son about to embark on the journey to adulthood. I had sacrificed so much to get to this point, to provide him the best I could as a single mother while my husband Grant pursued his high-flying real estate career. Our marriage had been turbulent, to put it mildly. Grant was never home, always chasing the next big deal while I worked long hours as a high school counselor to keep us afloat. But Eli was the light of my life. As long as I had him close, I endured all the heartaches and disappointments. Tonight, however, the wool had been lifted from my eyes. On his way back from the restroom, Grant's hushed phone conversation had shattered my world. Baby, just a few more months before the child support ends, then it's just you and me in paradise. He had crooned lovingly, oblivious to my presence just around the corner. I froze, bile rising in my throat. Grant was talking to his mistress, making plans to abandon us once he no longer had any legal obligations. Burning fury coursed through me as I returned to our table. How long had he been cheating while I sacrificed everything for our family? All the times I had forgiven his neglect, blaming the demands of his work, the vacations and parent-teacher conferences I attended alone, the nights waiting anxiously for him to come home. It was all a sham, a lie I told myself to keep going. Grant slipped back into his seat, eyes glued to his cell phone as he typed furiously, a small smile playing on his lips. The truth sat like a rock in my stomach while Eli chatted excitedly about his college applications. My eyes landed on the gift I had carefully selected for Grant, a limited-edition Hublot watch I had saved up for months to buy. Suddenly I wanted to hurl it in his lying, cheating face, this man who had vowed to love and cherish me. How could he destroy our family so callously? I took a deep breath, slowly moving the gift out of sight. Now was not the time. But soon— I promised myself he would face the truth. I would make sure he paid the price for his betrayal. The waiter arrived with our entrees, interrupting my raging thoughts. I slowly cut into my grilled salmon, chewing mechanically without tasting it. Grant was oblivious, prattling on about his upcoming deals between gulps of wine. Under the table, I slipped my phone out and composed a quick text to Marcus, an old family friend who also happened to be one of the sharpest divorce attorneys in town. Urgent, need discreet meeting. I hit send, hand trembling slightly. The die was cast. I could no longer avoid this. But I would be strategic, speak to Marcus first before confronting Grant. Above all, I needed to shield Eli. My sweet boy did not deserve any of this ugliness and heartbreak. He was innocent, his whole future ahead of him. I had to handle this right. Eli's excited voice shook me from my thoughts. Mom, Dad, thank you so much for dinner. I can't believe I'm finally eighteen, he beamed, raising his glass. To new beginnings ahead, I'm so grateful for your love and support. I managed a weak smile, clinking my glass softly. To new beginnings. The words nearly choked in my throat. Grant nodded absently, eyes still glued to his phone. Under the table, I slipped the watchbox back into my purse decisively. The lavish gift would be better served selling for a good price online. I had a divorce lawyer to pay now. Grant may have betrayed our vows without a second thought, but he would not escape so easily. I would fight for Eli, for myself, for all the years I had sacrificed holding this family together. The next chapter of my life was just beginning. The heavy wooden door creaked open, snapping me back to the present. I was sitting in Marcus's office, a tastefully decorated space that oozed success and prestige. He ushered me inside gently. Lorraine, please have a seat. Tell me what's going on. I sank into the plush leather chair across from his desk, clutching my purse tightly. Where should I even begin? Thank you for seeing me on such short notice, Marcus. I, I don't know who else to turn to right now. My voice quivered despite my best efforts. Marcus nodded, his bespectacled eyes radiating warmth and wisdom. Take your time. What can I do to help? I took a deep breath. It's Grant. I just found out he's been having an affair and plans to leave us as soon as Eli turns eighteen. Marcus's eyebrows shot up, but he stayed silent, waiting for me to continue. You've known us for years. You know what I've sacrificed for this family, 
working double shifts to cover bills when Grant's business was just starting out, handling everything at home by myself, finances, repairs, parenting. I've given everything I have. Anger and hurt welled up inside me. I thought back to all the times I'd swallowed my pain and frustration to keep the peace. The vacations and holidays I'd spent alone with Eli while Grant was tied up at work. How many signs had I missed or willfully ignored? Marcus handed me a box of tissues, his eyes brimming with compassion. I dabbed at my eyes hastily. Now was not the time for tears. I needed to be strong and strategic. I overheard him talking to his mistress last night. He promised her a new life together as soon as he's free of his obligations. All these years, and that's all Eli and I are to him, burdens to discard. I clutched my purse tighter, feeling the small birthday gift I'd never had the chance to give Grant. That watch would fetch a good price toward my legal fees. Grant owed me that much and more. Marcus scribbled some notes, glancing at his monitor. I see, and have you spoken to Grant directly about this? I shook my head. Not yet. I wanted to consult you first. See what my options are, especially finances and custody for Eli. At 18, Eli was legally an adult, but he still had a semester of high school before graduation. I needed to protect him, give him stability and care until he was fully on his own two feet. Marcus nodded sagely, steepling his fingers under his chin. You're being wise. Why don't you tell me more about your current situation? I can provide some recommendations once we have all the details. I spent the next hour laying everything bare, our assets, accounts, debts. Marcus took copious notes, only interrupting occasionally to ask thoughtful questions. In the twenty years I'd known him, his calm demeanor and sharp intellect had never wavered. He inspired confidence and trust. By the time we finished reviewing the paperwork, I felt lighter. Talking it all through had cleared my mind and firmed my resolve. I would not back down quietly or cave to Grant's intimidation. Too much was at stake. Marcus leaned back, removing his glasses. I know this is difficult, Lorraine, but you have several excellent options, especially given the evidence you have. He outlined a solid game plan to protect myself and Eli financially, while gathering more proof of Grant's misdeeds. Marcus would be discreetly consulting trusted colleagues to build an airtight case. For the first time in days I felt hope stirring inside me. I had an ally now someone dependable who could guide me through the turbulent times ahead. Grant may hold the money and resources, but I held the moral high ground. With strategic courage, I could still gain the advantage. The next move was mine. Mom, he can't get away with this. Eli's voice echoed loudly in the quiet kitchen. I shushed him gently. It was past midnight, and I didn't want to wake the neighbors. Lower your voice, sweetie. I know you're upset, but we have to be smart about this. I slid a cup of chamomile tea over and motioned for him to sit. We both needed to calm down and think clearly. Eli took a deep breath, clutching the mug tightly. I just can't believe Dad would do this to us. And that woman, Clara, she knew he was married. They have to pay for what they've done. I nodded wearily. My sweet boy didn't deserve to have his world shattered like this. When I first told him about Grant's affair, he had raged and cried, cursing his father's name. I couldn't remember the last time I'd seen Eli express much emotion. He was usually so stoic, immersed in his studies. This betrayal had cut deep. Revenge won't solve anything right now, I said gently. We need to be smart and gather evidence against them first. Marcus had advised documenting proof of Grant's long-term affair and reckless spending to gain leverage in the divorce proceedings. Hitting him where it hurt, his reputation and his money, was the smartest play. Eli gripped his mug tighter, eyes blazing. I can talk to some of Dad's former assistants and colleagues. Maybe they know something that could help. I hesitated. Eli's grades were stellar, and I didn't want him getting distracted or consumed by vengeance, but having an extra set of hands could be useful. Just be discreet, I finally said. Don't let it affect your schoolwork. Getting that academic scholarship is what matters most. Eli nodded. I know, Mom. My grades will stay up, I promise. I just want to help bring Dad to justice. His jaw was set stubbornly. Clearly, I wouldn't be able to talk him out of this crusade. Perhaps it would even be cathartic for Eli to actively contribute to holding Grant accountable. Okay, but no confrontations and don't give your father any reason to suspect us. I squeezed his hand gently. 
Now get some rest. You have exams next week. Eli hugged me tightly before shuffling off to bed, still mumbling curses at his father. I stayed up late finalizing my divorce filing papers and financial disclosures. Grant's sweet little mistress, Clara, was in for a rude awakening when she realized the price of her new life. Served her right for helping destroy my family and my trust. Over the next few weeks, Eli and I fell into an easy routine gathering evidence separately while maintaining normalcy on the surface. To the outside world, we were still one big, happy family. Meanwhile, Eli worked his charm getting incriminating details from Grant's friends, staff, and colleagues. My boy had his father's gift for persuasion, albeit with better motives. Slowly but surely, our documentation grew. Between Marcus's legal preparations and Eli's social sleuthing, everything was falling into place. My confrontational dinner with Grant was just a week away. Once Eli graduated, I could serve Grant the divorce papers along with a healthy dose of karmic payback. The anticipation made my heart race. For today, though, I had to set those thoughts aside. Eli's high school graduation ceremony was about to start. As he crossed the stage to accept his diploma, tall and handsome in his robe and mortarboard, I felt my heart swell with pride. Against all odds, my boy had made it. His life was just beginning, full of promise and possibility, and I would fight with my last breath to protect the future he deserved. I stared at the folder in front of me, anxiety and anticipation swirling in my gut. It contained the culmination of weeks of careful planning and evidence gathering, everything needed to confront Grant and destroy his twisted lies once and for all. It had been a long road getting here, the sleepless nights spent digging through old financial records and emails, looking for any shred of proof, Eli working his charm to get the truth from Grant's colleagues, my endless strategy sessions with Marcus to build an airtight case. We were as ready as we could be. And yet, my hands trembled as I held the sealed manila folder. Was I doing the right thing? Eli and I had built a stable life together despite Grant's neglect. Did I really need to demolish what remained of our family unit? Perhaps I should just take the high road, let karma take care of Grant and his midlife crisis fling while I focused on my future with Eli. I could tell Grant that I knew about his affair, but minimize the confrontation, amicably dissolve our marriage without all this ugliness, salvage some faint echo of the happy family we once were. I shook my head sharply, dispelling those weak thoughts. No more blind forgiveness and second chances for Grant. He had thrown away any goodwill I once felt when he betrayed our sacred vows, lied to my face every day while plotting his escape with that gold-digging secretary Clara. Grant deserved to be brought low after profiting from my years of sacrifice. This was about justice, not just revenge. Exposing his misdeeds was the only path to closure for me and especially Eli. My son had enough turmoil to process already without carrying this bitter secret forever. The truth would set us free. Our future peace and healing depended on total honesty and accountability. However difficult this dinner confrontation might be, I owed it to both of us to see it through. Eli popped his head into my study, thick dark hair disheveled as always. Mom, I'm headed out to meet some friends for pizza. Need anything before I go? I smiled, warmth filling my chest. No, sweetie, you go have fun. Stay safe and call me if you need a ride back. He nodded, eyes drifting to the hefty folder on my desk. I knew he shared my turbulent mix of anticipation and fear. But Eli had proven himself wise and discerning beyond his years. He understood what was at stake, what needed to be done. It'll be okay, Mom. No matter what happens, we're in this together. He hugged me quickly, gangly frame enveloping me. I clutched him tightly, trying to convey my gratitude and love through that embrace. Then he was gone, loping stairs taking two at a time. Tomorrow we would host Grant and Clara at a supposed celebration dinner, where I would finally serve Grant the harsh reality he deserved. A pit started forming in my stomach. It was almost time to face the music. I squared my shoulders and closed the folder. Right or wrong, the die was cast. All the weeks of painstaking preparation couldn't eliminate the risks we faced, but the time for hesitation and second thoughts was over. Whatever happened at tomorrow's confrontation, I had to be strong and see this through. For Eli, for myself, and for the life we could build as soon as Grant's poisonous secrets were laid bare. Tonight was the night. 
after endless planning and preparation, the confrontation I'd alternately longed for and dreaded had finally arrived. In just a few hours, Grant would arrive with his pampered mistress Clara, expecting a pleasant birthday celebration dinner. Oh, it would be memorable, all right, but for far different reasons than Grant anticipated. I smoothed my black dress and examined myself critically in the mirror. I had selected an outfit that portrayed strength and confidence. No more playing the meek, forgiving wife. Those days were done. Tonight, Grant would see the formidable woman he had unleashed through his callous betrayals. The doorbell rang, and I steeled myself before going to answer. It was Marcus, precisely on time. I welcomed him in to join Eli and I for a quick strategy session before the fateful confrontation. "'Good evening, Lorraine. How are you holding up?' Marcus asked kindly, eyeing me with concern. He knew this would be an emotional trial. I shrugged, aiming for nonchalance. Ready to finally serve Grant the harsh truth he deserves. In reality, my nerves were stretched taut as piano wire, but showing weakness or hesitation now would undermine everything we'd worked for. Marcus nodded. Remember, you have all the power tonight. The facts are on your side. He patted the file folder thick with evidence I had prepared to confront Grant with. We'll all be right here with you. Stay focused on your goal, exposing Grant's lies so you and Eli can move forward. Eli emerged from the kitchen, wearing a sharp button-down shirt and slacks. He had insisted on being present tonight, despite my offers to spare him this painful spectacle. I need to see this through, he had said gravely. My boy had grown up so fast this past month. Once again, I felt that pang of maternal pride and anguish. The doorbell rang again. No more time for doubts or second thoughts. Taking a deep breath, I strode to the foyer and threw open the door with more force than necessary. Showtime. Grant stood on the porch next to a tall, impeccably dressed blonde. Ah, the elusive Clara in the flesh. She was certainly beautiful, but looked rather bland and vapid. I managed a tight smile. Grant, Clara, so nice of you to come. Please make yourselves comfortable. My voice dripped honey, belying the maelstrom within. Grant breezed in casually, Clara clinging to his arm. Wouldn't miss Eli's celebration dinner. Where is the man of the hour, anyway? Right on cue, Eli appeared from the kitchen, face schooled into a mask of grim calm. We all took seats around the finely set dining table. Expensive china and crystal wine glasses glinted in the low light, the perfect backdrop for the bombshells about to be dropped. Marcus nodded discreetly, signaling that he had activated the hidden recording devices we had planted earlier. We needed every detail documented. I smiled tightly. So glad we're all together tonight for this special family occasion. Grant grinned while Clara fidgeted. I want to propose a toast. I raised my wine glass. To new beginnings. We all took sips. Now for the true theatrics to begin. There is something I need to discuss with you first, though, Grant. I kept my tone civil and calm, still playing the role. Grant looked confused, while Eli and Marcus's eyes were steely calm. They knew what was coming. I pulled out the thick file folder and let it drop onto the table with a resounding smack. New beginnings indeed. For example, your new beginning with Clara here, while our marriage was still very much intact. Grant paled rapidly. What are you talking about? He sputtered. Too late. The trap was sprung. I smiled icily. I think you know very well, but allow me to refresh your memory. I opened the folder slowly, watching Grant and Clara's eyes widen. Let's start with the credit card statements, shall we? I pulled out a stack of papers. Some very interesting hotel charges the past few years while you were working late. Grant sputtered, face rapidly turning red. I can explain. I silenced him with a look. Save it. Unless you can explain ten pages of charges for jewelry, lingerie, couples massages— must be quite the demanding client. Clara flushed crimson next to Grant, shrinking into her seat. Served her right, the two-faced homewrecker. And that's just the start. I slammed down another stack of papers. Emails to your assistant clear back to 2012, dictating love notes to your dearest Clara? I shook my head in mock sadness. Sk -sk -sk. You always were sloppy with covering your digital tracks. How did you— Grant stared at the mounting evidence, eyes bulging. I felt a surge of dark satisfaction at finally puncturing his brazen facade. It doesn't matter how. What matters is you being held fully accountable for destroying this family. 
My voice remained icy calm, strengthened by the righteous fury coursing through me. I pressed on, spurred by years of pent-up hurt and betrayal. Oh, and let's not forget the offshore accounts. Quite a lot of marital assets diverted without my knowledge. I'm sure the court will have questions. With that, I turned my gaze to Marcus, who had been silently observing. His face was a mask of restrained fury. He rose slowly from his seat. Good evening, Grant, Clara. I'm Marcus Wright, attorney representing Lorraine during these divorce proceedings. Grant's face somehow turned even paler. I drank in his shocked expression, thrilled to finally have gained the upper hand. As you can see, we have compiled extensive evidence of your financial malfeasance and infidelity. Lorraine has a rock-solid case for an extremely favorable divorce settlement and child support. Marcus motioned to the damning array of documents. I suggest you refrain from denying any accusations or attempting to discredit this evidence. We have enough proof to bury you for years in litigation and destroy what remains of your professional reputation. He paused, leaning over the table to look Grant right in the eye. However, if you agree to a quick, amicable settlement, we can avoid airing more of your dirty laundry. I urge you to make the wise choice here. His smoothly delivered ultimatum pierced the heavy silence. Clara was openly sobbing now, mascara smudged across her face. Under different circumstances, I may have pitied her. But tonight, I only felt cold satisfaction seeing her lavish, ill-gotten world crumble. Grant buried his face in shaking hands, the magnitude of his defeat sinking in. I had imagined this moment so many times, certain I would explode in rage or glee. But confronted with the reality, I only felt bone-deep relief. Our painful charade was finally ending. The long road of healing could begin. I rose calmly from my seat, holding Grant's defeated gaze. Your lies end tonight. Sign the settlement. Grant us a quick divorce. And this all disappears. You have a choice to make. With that, I turned my back and strode away, my heels clicking decisively on the tile floors. The confrontation was over, my long-awaited justice finally obtained. It was time to start writing a new story. I stood at the kitchen sink, numbly rinsing wine glasses with shaky hands. The confrontation I had planned and agonized over for weeks was finally over. Grant and his tearful mistress had staggered out minutes earlier, shell-shocked and defeated. Marcus stepped up beside me, gently prying the glass and sponge from my clenched fingers. It's done, Lorraine. You were strong and decisive, just as we planned. His kind eyes radiated reassurance. Go rest. I'll finish up here. I managed a weak smile of gratitude before sinking into a kitchen chair, body and mind utterly spent. The adrenaline that had fueled my ruthless composure through the evening was bleeding away, leaving me hollowed out. Eli entered cautiously, kneeling beside my chair. Mom, are you okay? His worried face blurred through my exhausted tears. I pulled him into a crushing embrace, clinging to the reassuring solidity of his presence. My boy, my reason for enduring all these trials. It had all been for him. I'm okay, sweetie. It's just overwhelming. I stroked his hair as he hugged me tighter. Watching his father's shameful secrets brutally exposed couldn't have been easy either, but Eli had insisted on bearing witness tonight, to see justice served for both of us. Once again his maturity and resilience left me in awe. I dabbed my eyes and sat up straighter. Enough tears. I needed some answers. Marcus re-entered, holding a thick manila envelope. The settlement agreement is ready for your review, along with the petition for divorce, I'll be filing immediately. It's an extremely favorable outcome. He summarized the terms. 70% of marital assets, full child support for Eli's college, and enforcing Grant's retirement from his company to protect our stakes. It was far beyond what I had hoped for. Marcus had worked magic. I flipped numbly through the pages, emotions still muted with shock. It was all here in ink. Grant's admission of guilt on multiple counts, surrendering everything we had demanded, he had caved entirely, knowing any court battle would be hopeless against our arsenal of evidence. Thank you, Marcus. This is more than fair. I tried to inject warmth into my numb voice. He had fought brilliantly for us. Marcus gave a satisfied nod, snapping his briefcase closed. Of course. It's the very least Grant owes you both, after all these years. Justice won't restore what he broke, but it can clear a path for your fresh start. I walked him out still in a daze, with Eli's arm wrapped firmly around my waist. As I watched Marcus's car disappear into the night, 
an unexpected thought pierced through the fog. It was over. Every sleepless night, every hour spent strategizing and gathering proof, every ache over my demolished marriage, I could release it now. Grant's ruin was assured, and my future finally free of his poisonous web. Tomorrow I could begin rebuilding a joyful life with Eli, unburdened and unashamed. It would take time to truly heal, but we had taken the first bold steps tonight. I turned to Eli, hope flickering tentatively inside me. Why don't we take that trip to Italy we've always dreamed about, a mother-son graduation celebration? Eli's face lit up, eyes shining. Really? That would be amazing. I hugged him tightly once more before heading upstairs, the promise of tomorrow's freedom propelling my tired steps. I could rest easy at last, justice served and a new dawn awaiting. The past was finally laid to rest. Warm sunlight filtered through swaying Italian cypress trees as Eli and I strolled down a cobblestoned path, gelato in hand. It had been two blissful weeks since we'd arrived in Tuscany for a celebratory graduation trip, courtesy of Grant's newly liquidated assets. Italy was just as beautiful and healing as I'd hoped. Long, leisurely days spent exploring quaint hillside towns and tasting delicious local wine and cuisine. Evenings spent laughing with Eli over home-cooked meals on our villa's patio, looking out over rolling vineyards stretching to the horizon. Our confrontation with Grant already felt like a distant memory. Being immersed in the beauty and serenity of Italy made those painful chapters of our life somehow smaller. Petty, even. I sighed contentedly, linking my arm through Eli's as we walked. "'How's your pistachio gelato, sweetie?' he grinned. "'Amazing, as always.' This was the best graduation gift ever, Mom. My heart swelled. You deserve it, kiddo. I'm so proud of you. Watching Eli relax into his carefree young self again after shouldering so much responsibility and heartache had been the greatest joy. He would return home ready for college, unburdened by his father's toxicity. We arrived back at the villa as the setting sun bathed the terracotta roof tiles in golden light. I curled up on a lounge chair with a glass of Chianti, flipping idly through my discarded novel. For the first time in ages, I actually had time to read something unrelated to financial records or divorce law. Across the patio, Eli was furiously typing on his laptop, brow furrowed in concentration, probably chatting with that pretty Italian friend he'd met in town earlier this week. Young love in the Tuscan sun, how quickly life moved on. My own heart suddenly felt lighter than it had in years. The isolation and stress that had weighed me down was finally lifting day by day. I was remembering what it felt like to breathe freely, revived by new possibility. A notification from my lawyer back home interrupted my musings. Marcus had sent through the final divorce decree, officially dissolving my tattered marriage. In the attachment, he included a brief update on Grant's downfall. I quickly skimmed through. Grant had submitted his resignation from the company, disappearing quickly and quietly as agreed. His reputation was mud in the industry after rumors of embezzlement and misconduct surfaced. No cushy CEO positions awaited him now. A vindictive part of me hoped he was suffering, consumed by shame and regret over losing his wealth and stature. But an even larger part simply felt indifferent. Grant no longer held any power over me, for better or worse. I stretched out on the lounge chair contentedly, the sun had set, leaving a dusky purple hue over the vineyards. Somewhere nearby, cicadas chorused softly. Eli wandered over and squeezed my shoulder. Hey, Mom, want to go grab dinner in town tonight? My treat. I smiled, pride and gratitude welling up. That sounds perfect, honey. Arm in arm, we made our way slowly down the winding path toward town. The past was finally laid to rest, granting me passage to a life reclaimed, and I intended to savor every luminous step ahead with my boy beside me. Justice had been done, and Hope's first tender shoots were rising from the ashes at last. Our new story was just beginning.